start with that props. If you have a pillow nearby, please grab it. Also, if you happen to have a strap or a kunga <laughs> or a scarf, it could be super handy. Not necessarily something you'll need to use, but I always like to leave that around. And so, the purpose of a pillow is to elevate your hips just a little bit so that we can keep a long spine more effortlessly, so that we may begin breathing first and foremost, giving our attention to the breath so we can find our presence. If you don't have a pillow, you'll notice that you'll kind of hunch in, even if you are super flexible. I mean, I've been practicing for many years, but this posture is still not a very comfortable one uh, for more than maybe a minute. Crossing your legs is how I go about it, but if crossing your legs is too much, you can grab a couple pillows and you can also take a seat like so with your shins on the mat. If you don't have a mat, any soft surface will do. Even a hard surface, as long as you're comfortable, you can always adjust and adapt. This is your practice. I'm here to guide you, but ultimately, you know your body, you know your environment. Follow your bliss. And thank you. All right. So here I invite you to close your eyes or just keep a soft gaze onto the ground if closing your eyes is not comfortable for you. And I invite you to begin breathing as you normally do. So no agenda with the breath, but observe the breath as it enters your body. Observe from within, notice, do you breathe on your chest? Does your breath go more to your belly? Do you feel your belly growing when you breathe? Do you notice that your breath enters and leaves your body relatively quickly for what your perception of deep breathing is? Or do you find yourself going into a deep breath whenever you take this seat and close your eyes? There is no judgment. There is no expectation. There's only curiosity, observation, discovery of awareness. And whenever you feel ready, I invite you to begin a breath that is full of awareness as to where it's going now. So your breath will now go to the base of your lungs. So you'll feel it coming from below, so from your belly and rising. You'll notice that when you do this, your belly will want to grow like a pregnant belly full of prana, full of breath. And then your lower ribs begin to expand out coming to your upper ribs all the way to the top of your chest, in which case your belly might then come back in just a little because you opened up so much space. And when you get there, take an extra sip of breath and pause when you feel full. And then slowly allow the breath to exit from the top of your chest. Gravity will support you. The centering will support you. And then the mid ribs and then the lower ribs. Finally, your belly will begin to meet your spine. And then you begin a new cycle where the breath goes to the base of your lungs and your belly begins to expand first. Your low ribs, mid ribs, to the top of your chest. You can put one hand on the chest and one hand on the belly to feel this movement if it helps you. And pause at the top of your breath whenever that is for you before slowly exhaling from the top of your chest all the way down until your belly begins to meet the spine at the bottom of your exhale. This is called a three-part breath or a full yogic breath. And it activates all of the breathing parts of your body, your belly, your diaphragm, your back muscles, your ribs, it's a full activation that not only calms the body and the nerves, it also allows for focus, for concentration, for presence to take place with more ease. And you're welcome to repeat this for as many rounds as you feel called to, but at the very least, offer yourself 10 breaths. And this is a long breath, so your inhale is at least a six count. You don't have to count it, just feel the seconds pass you by. And when you pause, pause for at least two seconds. See if you can do that. And if you can't, it's totally fine. And in fact, if you also 
don't feel the breath going to the belly or the heart, if you can't really find your awareness for this today, that's also very okay. What matters is that you are placing new connections in your neurons. You're creating, you're building, understanding as to this fullness of breath. Three more rounds at your own pace. Gather the information as to your lungs, the edges of your lungs. Your diaphragm as it pushes down when you breathe in, bringing your belly to rise and grow. Your ribs as they dance apart and then flow back together in every single one. And perhaps on your exhales, you offer yourself a sound. It could be a hum, it could be a throat constriction. <sighs> Whatever works for your body and your space. On your next inhale, whenever that is for you, I invite you to extend your arms out to your side body. Fingertips are active. As you breathe in, your arms rise in unison. At the top of the breath, the hands meet in prayer. Take an extra sip of air. Exhale slowly and gently as the hands come down in prayer towards your heart. And when your hands meet your sternum, your heart center, I invite you to focus on intentions for your practice today. And by that I mean, what brought you to stay here on this stream of you? Why do you feel the time to honor your body, to gift your body? What is that motivation? Feel it. Make it your intention, your reminder to breathe more fully and to be more present as we stay together for the next few minutes. And once you feel complete with your thoughts and intentions, I invite you to focus on gratitude. Think of one or more things that flow through your mind right now, whatever, the monkey mind, the present mind, that you're grateful for. And feel that gratitude ripple through your body, through every cell. Imagine it as a light that starts in your heart, goes to your brain, and flows through your nervous system, lighting up every channel, subtle and physical. And on your next inhale, expand your arms out once again, just as we did the first time, and breathe in this gratitude, this thankfulness. There's so much to be grateful for, even amidst this wild transition. Away. At the top of your breath, the hands meet. Exhale slowly and gently as your hands come down to your heart, as you seal your intentions, as you seal this gratitude in your being, and then bow into your fingertips. You can even massage your third eye right between your eyebrows here with your fingertips and it feels good. And then slowly, place your hands in a comfortable position on your thighs. Maybe switch the legs around if you feel a calling to do that. And we're going to begin warming up the neck. So we're going to inhale with a long spine. Exhale, release the head forward. Inhale, bringing the neck to one side. Exhale, forward. Inhaling the other way. Your shoulders are melting to the ground. And then we're just going to go right back. Side to side. Just a half circle for now. Honoring the fact that we use technology. And this is kind of the body that we use. Our head facing tilted forward. And then when you feel ready, go full circle. So take the head all the way back. And to the side. So you're... Exhaling front and back. You're inhaling through the sides. Exhale back. And then begin to inhale onto the other side. And then you're just going to go the other way. So switch the circle around. Notice how it feels. Notice how your brain processes this change. We always have one side that we're more coordinated at. So begin to just explore which side that is for you. And then slowly come back to a neutral spine. We're gonna begin warming up the side body now. So you have a few options. 
The first option is to keep your fingertips on the ground and simply move one arm up and bring it back. And that might be too much. And that's perfectly fine. Okay. But if you feel the calling to go deeper, you're welcome to place the whole hand on the mat. And you can keep sliding until maybe your forearm meets the mat and boom. That upper hand then comes up all the way to the side. And if it feels super good here, you're welcome to begin an exhale that brings you forward in diagonal. And then you cross to the other side. And on the other side. So you get a few options. And once again, coming back to that original option, which is simply to go from side to side. Inside. And the other. But breathe. Breathe here. The deeper you breathe, the deeper you feel the expansion on your body. Not just the side body, but then you notice how everything is connected. Ah, and exhale, and sound. And offer yourself a sigh, a moan, a groan. We are so limited by the judgment people give us. And the breath is one of these spaces where we feel judged. Oftentimes I'm in yoga class and someone will say, ah, as they move. And then somebody will look, like, oh my God, what happened there? It's like, wow, that person's present, you know? Be present too. And when you feel complete, come back to center. We're gonna move on to tabletop. So if you have a pillow, you can place it underneath your knees if you have sensitive knees, or you can just bring it to the side. I have a mat that's pretty dandy, so I don't need a, a pillow here. So tabletop. This means an alignment of wrists, elbows, shoulders, a micro bend on your elbow. Knees and hips also in alignment. But when you get there, begin to feel the ground with your hands and your knees and the tops of your feet. Begin to move in any way that feels right for you. So here's where I'd like to invoke your spirit animal if it happens to have four limbs that touch the ground. So take a moment to really be present with whatever calls out to you. And then find your stillness. We're gonna move on to wrist adjustments and wrist opening. So I go one hand at a time and I highly advise you to. So you place the fingers towards your thighs here or towards the side of the mat, whatever feels best. And if both of these are too much, you can just take a seat and just stretch and open it out with your opposite hand. I'm gonna use my mat because I really dig the intensity I feel when the fingertips are facing my thighs. The other hand is a base support. So you're equally supported here. And then when you find your grounding, begin to move the body once again. So you're welcome to simply move gently side to side. You're also welcome to do some cat and cow. So bring everything in and up. And then exhale and bring everything down to the mat. Chin rising. Or maybe for you, stillness is where you want to be. So whatever you want to do, go ahead. And then slowly we're going to place the hands right back, tabletop, or we're just going to go on to the other side. Other hand now meets the same space where your other hand was. So now if you feel pain in this wrist versus the first one you did, adjust, adapt. So go to the side, use your opposite hand. Same thing as described before. And and then move the body in any way that feels right, that feels good, and begin to understand the connection, how your entire body is connected. We are activating one wrist, and yet when you move your tailbone in a certain way, you feel that wrist in a certain way. And if you want to take some cat and cows here, you feel your wrist in another capacity of body. It's magical. Our bodies are magic vessels, and this practice is intended to simply remind you of that. And remind you of your power of creation. You are co-creating not just your body, you're co-creating everything you touch, breathe into, feel. So back to tabletop. From here, we are going to take cat and cows legit now. So I'm going to offer you a breath that I love. It's called lion's breath. And I'm going to do it facing you because this is a breath that a lot of people judge themselves with. And I want you to see that if this is the time for you to open up. This is the time to release judgment, not just in here, but outside of your mat, outside of your space. So this is how it goes. We're going to breathe in. I'm going to do a diagonal so you can also see the body. So we're going to breathe in, bringing all of your back up towards the ceiling. And then when you exhale, you're going to stick your tongue out. 
And maybe your eyeballs can gaze up too. And then you can breathe in. And release the facial muscles. And then when you exhale, once again. Notice when you exhale with your tongue out, how you contract your lungs far more. So the base of your lungs are fully contracted. All that stale air that can stay there for days is now, boom, out of your body, making space for the new. So this is extremely rejuvenating as well as it is a support system for concentration and full body oxygenation. So go a few more rounds of this cat and cow posture, of this flow, and this breath. If you find that this exhale is too much for you today, then simply inhale and exhale as it feels right. And you can even change and inhale as your heart comes down, exhaling as your back lifts up. Be the scientist of your being. Explore what feels right for your body right here, right now, based on this guidance that I'm offering you as support. Now, whenever you're ready, tuck both toes and slowly take a seat onto your toes. Ah. Now, this might be uncomfortable for you. If so, you're welcome to keep your hands on the mat. If you are comfortable, then I invite you to take a full seat and begin placing, shifting your weight onto your outer toes so you can really feel them. And then come right back and feel the weight on your big and second toe now. This is where your balance lies. So you're welcome to expand to the edges of your feet so you can really feel and open them. But always come back to that center line so you can understand where your strength resides. Breathe. Breathe into this discomfort. It's time we begin to sit with our discomfort and learn how to accept it, be with it. We fall in love with it because it teaches us so much. And so we come back to that tabletop, tap the toes out. Now we're gonna go for the back of the hands. So we did already the extension here. Now we're gonna go for the opposite movement. So gently place the back of your hands on the mat and maybe curl the fingers in or not. Depends on what you feel you see. And then move the body if it feels good. So you once again realize and notice how your wrists flow with the body. Cat and cow is always welcome here. And then gently place that hand back. Now let's go to the other side. So back to the other hand. And curl the fingers in. Open them up. Yeah. Mm. So this exhale was just a slight throat constriction with very little sound. But the sound, the moans, the groans, it's a soothing operation for your brain. Whenever you offer that sound, you're letting your brain know that you're safe and you're ready to move. And speaking of being ready to move, now that we are, place both hands on your mat. Tuck your toes if they're not tucked yet. Lift your tailbone up to the sky, keeping your knees bent for now. And in fact, super bend one knee and kind of stretch out the other and then go for the other side. Super stretch for you. Just feel this downward dog position with you. Now, if you practice a lot, and you want to take this a whole step further, you're welcome to take twists, grabbing one hand and going for the opposite ankle. And taking a glance at the ceiling, or maybe simply the front of your face. That's good. This is too much, now go there too. I'm gonna to go there too because it feels really awesome, and it doesn't, not every time. Sometimes it's not that great. So you gotta to listen to the body, listen to what you need, Every day we change. Eventually find your stillness in your downward facing dog. Spine is long. Bend your knees as much as you need to, to feel the spine lengthening towards the ground. Release your neck and your forehead to the mat once you know where you're going. And feel your hands on the mat. If there's any air pockets in your hands and you can feel those, see if you can bring a full print with your hand on the mat. The only air pocket that potentially will exist is right in the center of your palm. But especially that L shape between your index finger and your thumb, 
all of that needs to be grounded. Although it might feel uncomfortable for now for some of us, this is where your strength also resides in your hands. This is where you protect your wrists. Breathe deeply. We are here for a while. This is a very vitality inducing posture, but once you feel the heat, that's the way to do. One more breath. And then you're going to pick one leg to rise up. Just remember which leg that is. I always like to offer freedom as to which leg you want to start with first. And then notice which one you began with. For most of us, it's our right leg because we're kind of conditioned to do that. See how I did it just now? Yeah. Just be aware. Inhale that leg up. As you exhale, your belly's going to be strong and you're going to bring your knee towards your heart. And you're going to go on the tippy toe of that back foot. And then just bring that leg right back up as you inhale. Exhale, bring that knee now to one elbow, above the elbow if you can, flexing that foot you're bringing with you. Inhale, bring that leg up. Exhale, go to the other side. Inhale, lift the leg up. Exhale, bring the knee to the heart and land that foot onto the back. Yeah, that back knee is up for now. So just keep that back knee up. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Your arms can be on the ground, or you can lift the arms up. Up to you. And breathe in. Exhale, bring the hands down to the floor. Bring that back knee down. Untuck those toes. And from here, we're going to go on a flow, where we inhale to rise up with our arms, if you would like. You don't have to. Put your hands down. As you exhale, you're going to bring your hands down if they're not there yet, and you're going to extend the front leg. Toes. Coming towards your forehead. Now, if you're super flexible and you're ready to go there, you're welcome to expand this onto a full split and practice that. I am not there yet. I am working on it every day. <laughs> and here's the interesting part. So keep flowing. Go back and forth, inhaling up, exhaling down. The more flexible you tend to be, the more strength you need to develop so that you can protect that flexibility. But the stronger your muscles naturally may be, the less flexibility you'll find. So you need to work on that. And I find that I do have pretty strong muscles for, for my build. My flexibility is something I'll have to work on for this one. It's a beautiful lifetime practice. I'm still, are you still for yours? You should be. You are the most intimate relationship you'll ever have fall in love every day. From here, lift that back knee up once again. And now you're going to open your body to the side that feels most natural to you. So that back foot is going to fully meet the mat. And the front foot's going to be kind of out, but in alignment with your kneecap, okay? So the toe, kneecap, aligned. And then we're just going to flow side to side with your hands on the ground for spider lunges. Yeah. We're just going to move side to side. I'm going to turn around to show you my forward motion here. Awesome. And you're also welcome to bring your hands to the heart if you want to go for higher stance. Totally up to you. Now eventually we're going to go back to that front leg we began. I'm going on the other side because I turned around for you guys. So front foot meets the back foot. High plank. Strong belly. Now, keeping your elbows as close to the ribs as possible, we're going to slowly make our way down into a low plank or chaturanga. And then you're going to inhale. You're going to keep your body on the ground. You're going to lift your chest for cobra. You're welcome to use your hands to support you or not. And from here, with or without the support of your knees, we're going to make our way into downward facing dog once again. <sighs> for the other side. So that other leg, the leg you haven't lifted yet, now lifts up. As you exhale, bring the knee to the heart. That back foot's gonna become a very pointy, pointy foot. Inhale that leg back up. Exhale, bring that leg to one elbow. Inhale, lift that leg up. Exhale, bring it to the other elbow. Inhale, lift the leg up. Exhale, bring the knee to the heart. Land that foot gently down in the front for lunge. Oh. So we're going to keep our back knee up for now. 
And you are welcome to stay here or lift both arms up. Press it below. Breathe. Full breath. Remember your intentions for your practice. Bring them here. Whenever you feel challenged, bring them. Exhale, bring the hands down to the ground. Back knee meets the ground. Same flow, other side. So we're going to inhale to rise the arms up, if you would like. Otherwise, you can keep the hands down. But as you exhale, the hands will definitely meet your mat. And you're going to extend that front leg. Toes coming towards your forehead. Inhale, bring that leg fall up. The arms go. And exhale, bring it down. And extend. You just keep flowing. We're going to go for a couple more rounds. And notice this side. Notice oh, what this side has to offer. I've been noticing some pain on my back, on the front of my right leg, whenever I extend too much. Because every single day I'm practicing my splits. So now I need to honor the fact that I might have gone too far in my desire to be flexible. And I need to honor that space. And I'm sticking so I'm keeping my hands on the ground and I'm extending gently on both sides. And whenever you feel ready, once again, that back foot, tuck it, open the body, the side that feels most natural, and begin spider lunges again. This is your second round. So you are welcome to play with something different. Perhaps you want to bring your body up this time. Perhaps you don't. Whatever you seek to do is a good place to be. Couple more rounds here. And the next time you find yourself coming to that front leg where we began, bring your hands down, bring that back foot forward. Inhale, bring your spine towards a half lift here. So your spine is lengthened, your hands are on your chins. Exhale, release the head forward, forward fold. From here, you're welcome to stay just as you are. You're welcome to grab for opposite elbows and kind of sway around. Or you can bring both hands underneath your feet if your flexibility allows for it. And you bend your knees as much as you need to here. And you can even begin massaging your wrists with your hands, with your feet, with your toes. You can begin to even lift the heels off of the mat if you want to practice your balance, keeping your gaze strong. Strong gaze on one specific spot here. Then you can put your heels down, release your hands if this is where you went. Inhale once again, halfway lift with your spine. Exhale, fold forward, bend your knees and begin to rise up. Head is the last to lift. And we're going to face forward. Yeah, mountain pose. So from here, we're going to go towards the more challenging aspect of the practice. And then we're going to cool it down. You have a wall, hopefully. If you do, it's your friend. I will not be using a wall today, but I will be using a strap. Because I'm not that flexible yet, as we have before mentioned in this practice. So just bring one shin bone in and begin circling your ankle out, circling your ankle in. And you can stay right here. This is a great place to be. But if you feel the calling to go further, you know what? I'm just going to keep my knees bent and show it to the people who don't have anything to support them. Imagine a strap. I would put the strap right here, right, on my, on my, um, the center of my feet. But imagine I don't have one, because I don't. I'm just going to grab your toe with the peace finger or the outer edge of your feet, whatever feels best for you. And then you're just going to begin extending the leg as far as it'll go. So I'm keeping my knee bent here. But I can't go further, I've realized, so I will. Now, here's where a wall can support you with that other arm, or you can use your other arm as a balance tool. It's up to you. Balance is always preferred. Practicing balance is incredibly useful on and off the mat, especially in the current times we live in. Keep your gaze unmoving, which is not something I'm doing right now. The less you move with your eyes, the more you can stay. And from here, you can open the body out to the side as well. And this is where I'll bend my knees, for sure. <laughs> but 
but not for long. The day will come, darling. And now, you're welcome to come back and hug your shins as we begin, or you can take it to full expert throttle load and just go for the opposite hand and open your body for a twist. And maybe there's a wall behind you that you can use, or maybe you can just use your arms for, for balance without the wall. I don't really have a choice because the wall is literally right behind me, so I gotta do that. Gotta use my wall. Breathe deeply here. Connect with the breath, especially in the postures that challenge you the most. Now slowly make your way back to the center. Keep holding that hand where it is. And then when the other hand meets that hand, then boom, hug that foot with both hands if possible. Bend the knee as much as you need to here. Yeah? And then slowly make your way back to where we began. Okay. And then release. Ooh, now you should be feeling that other leg. So how about a vinyasa? Let's do it. We're gonna inhale to rise up, heart lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, high plank. Bring it down. Inhale, cobra. Or upward facing dog is also totally cool, bringing the knees up. And then exhale to downward facing dog. Oh, and then walk, float, dance your way into that forward fold. And speaking of dance, in this forward fold, allow yourself to flow a bit with your body. Dance your way as you rise up side to side. Choose the last to lift. Bring in more. Feeling your spine, shoulder by shoulder, vertebrae by vertebrae. Mountain pose. Hmm. Other side. The leg you feel the most now. <laughs> Grab that. And then begin circling the ankles out. Circling your ankle in. You're welcome to stay right here. If you want to take it further, we're going to once again, okay? We're going to grab with peace fingers the big toe or the outer edge of that foot. Whatever works for you. I like the peace finger vibe. And then we're going to slowly extend that leg out. Other arm, support. Be it on a wall, be it simply with its weight and its capacity for understanding this space. Awareness, awareness of the body. Keep your gaze unwavering in one spot. You know where you are. You don't need to look at me. And then slowly, if you would like, you're welcome to open that leg out, keeping your hips in alignment. So no turning of the hips here. Keep your hips aligned, even if that means really bending your knees, which is what I got to do. As you can tell, but it looks pretty cool. I really like the bent vibe. You know, it reminds me of many of the Hindu gods. Shiva. The dancing Shiva. It's a beautiful, beautiful representation of, of that marvelous God. And then from here, once again, you are welcome to take it to full throttle expert mode and grab that opposite hand and open the body towards that leg for a twist. Back wall for me here is not an option. I, I, I'm like touching it even though I don't want to. But I got like half an inch that I'm trying to keep between us so that I can practice my balance. And I am sweating, and I hope you are too, depending on where in the world you are. You might be sweating a little more or less. And then slowly make your way back to center with your torso. Keep your hand where it is, place your other hand on top, and then move that hand to the other side. Inhale, bring it all out. And slowly bend that leg back to hugging your shins where we begin. Release. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Shake it out. Begin moving your way. So from here, we're gonna find ourselves in our forward fold, but I invite you to move your way there. So don't just go into a forward fold. Take advantage of the fact that you are moving, rangeful body. 
so just let your body take you into the point where you fold forward in reverence to the magic that you are. Inhale for a halfway lift. Exhale, bring the hands to the mat. Place your feet back for high plank. And slowly flow through whatever vinyasa suits you. So we're going to go for that back bend again after the low plank. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Hmm. Take a couple breaths here. If you need child's pose, place your knee on the ground. Place your forehead on your mat. Breathe. Bring your hips as close to your heels as you can. Use your hands to help you. Space between your shoulders and your head. Mm. And slowly make your way, if you are in child's pose, Make your way onto tabletop and down onto Sphinx. If you are in downward dog, bring your knees down onto tabletop. And then place your forearms onto the mat. Bring your hips onto the mat. And lift your heart up and out. Hands are strong. There's a lot of length in your neck and your shoulders. And from here, we're going to slowly come all the way down. So this posture seems tricky to get into, but it's actually very fluid. We're going to bring up our arms, shoulder length, if you will. And then you're going to pick one leg to rise up. That leg will then begin to move across the opposite leg as you slowly make your way onto that shoulder that's on the ground. The other shoulder will naturally lift up as you move your leg across your body. Uh, and then you can stay right here. Or you can bring that foot you lifted up. You can bring that foot to the ground. And your opposite hand, it can stay on, in front of your gaze for the gentlest approach. Or you can bring it all the way back. You can even grip with the other hand if it's available to you. One more breath here. And then slowly to make your way back, you're simply gonna allow your chest to make its way towards the mat, forehead remains on the mat. You're just gonna find your way right back to laying with your belly down. And then both arms are extended, shoulder length. And you're going to move to the other side. So the opposite leg now lifts up and then slowly crosses over that other leg as your belly begins to rise, as your heart lifts. And you open up your shoulder on the other side. That opposite hand can stay in front of your gaze. Or you can bring it right back if your flexibility allows for it. So you're not only opening up just shoulder space, you're also opening up neck. You're also opening up hip. One more breath here. And then slowly make your way back simply by putting your heart and your chest back onto your mat, forehead remains on the mat, you're laying with your belly down. And then place both forearms on the mat, Sphinx. So we're back where we began. From here, bring your hands towards your ribs. Keep your knees on the mat, or you can lift them up if you're an experienced practitioner here. And we're just gonna find our way onto tabletop, onto a seat. We're gonna begin cooling it down. Ah, oh, so from the seat, I invite you to simply curl in, curl out, simply making the spine flow just a little more. And maybe your seat is an easy pose, but maybe you want to take it a step further and bring one heel 
towards the opposite hip, okay? Maybe you wanna take it even further. Maybe instead of placing it towards your hips, you wanna feel further extension by placing it on top of that opposite knee. And if you find that there's space here, you're welcome to grab a pillow and place it there. If you don't have a pillow, you can grab that foot and place it slightly forward. So you're still getting that same flexibility workout um, exercise, but in a gentler experience. For this side, I can go all the way without a pillow, but you will see that for my other side, whoosh, it's a whole other story. So we gotta honor this difference. So inhale with a lengthened spine. You're welcome to stay right here, regardless of where you choose to be, or you can inhale with a lengthened spine and with a flat back for as far as you can make it, go forward. And then forward fold completely, letting go of the spine, curling in, chin going towards your heart. Mm. And then slowly rise up. When you feel right, your chin is the last to lift. And we're gonna go for the other side. So if you're in a cross-legged position, simply switch the feet out. If you have one foot next to the hip, go for the other side. And if you wanna take it to a full extension, bring that leg out. And on this side, I definitely need to use a pillow. So I will honor that need, that growth that takes time. You're gonna inhale with a lengthened spine. You're gonna stay right here if you'd like. If you prefer to keep going. Keep going forward, all the way with a flat back until you finally release fully onto the mat. And breathe. Remember to breathe here, creating space on each vertebrae. Ah. Making sounds with your exhale, releasing yourself from judgment, and most importantly, releasing others from your own judgment habits. And slowly we come back up, chin is the last to lift. And if you've got a pillow, slowly remove it. If you need support of your hand, do that. Yes. And then gently, we're going to make our way onto our back. But we're not just gonna slump our way into our back. We're gonna give integrity to this movement. Love, light, support, and a little abdominal exercise. Cause why not? So, we got a few options. We're gonna go to boat pose, yeah? My feet are on the mat right now. My hands and arms are extended forward, palms up, as if I'm offering the gift of light and love, which I know. So, keeping that back flat, now I'm gonna choose to lift my feet up because I wanna challenge myself. You don't need to do that. You can stay with the feet down, whatever works. And if you wanna go super expert pro mode, bring your leg up. And from here, we're gonna lower it down wherever you are. We're gonna lower it down and bring it up. Exhale to bring it down, inhale to lift. Exhale to bring it down each time closer to the ground. Inhale to lift. And then eventually, exhale slowly with control, belly engaged, chin in all the way until you meet your mat fully. Ah, perfect. You did it. And from here, it's just chilling, kind of. <laughs> so we're gonna bring both feet down. We're gonna cross one leg on top of the other here. And then we're gonna grab the back of that leg that was still on the mat. Whichever one you choose to go first is a good place to be. You're also welcome to grab your shin bone of that leg if that feels better for you. So it's up to you. And then you just gonna swing side to side, massaging your back. This is a supine pigeon posture, so you're opening your hips. Now notice that my elbow here is touching the inner thigh that I'm opening up space in. So you can use your elbow to actually push further. And if this is all too much for you, you're welcome to grab that strap or that conga and use that instead of your hands to give a little more space. Now from here, you're gonna unwind that grip. You're gonna place your hands onto your sides. It could be a cactus arm, an extended arm, whatever you want. 
And you're going to leave your legs just as they are. And you're just going to let your knees fall to one side. Just going to go there. Let it fall. Once it gets there, then you're welcome to adjust. So maybe you want to cross your legs a little further. Maybe you want to release your cross-legged position and just let the knees fall down to the side. Whatever. Whatever works for you. But this is a, a twist that will allow your organs to flush a lot of toxins. So breathe deeply onto your belly. We're going to take four twists today. So this is the first four. So breathe deeply here. The more you can breathe on your belly here, the better. So this is a great place to practice that belly breath. Not the three-part breath, but simply sending that breath to the belly, letting the belly grow and coming back. Offer yourself a couple more breaths that way. And then from here, if you uncross your legs, cross that leg right back. Inhale with belly strong, bring it to center, and let the knees fall to the other side, keeping your legs as they are. And then as they fall, you can stay right here, but if this doesn't feel good, you're welcome to unwind the cross-legged position, or otherwise take a twist on this, in this format that feels best for you. And if your shoulder lifts a little bit, it's okay. You don't have to struggle to keep that shoulder down on the ground. As long as you don't feel pain, you're good. So just allow yourself to. Discomfort is okay. Discomfort is important. But pain is not. And you'll know the difference. Breathe. Breathe onto your belly. Feel it rise. Place your hand on your belly if you would like. And then slowly, whenever you feel ready, after a couple of breaths here, make your way back through center. Bring both knees to touch and hug forehead to the knees. And then slowly make your way back and cross the other leg on top now. From here, we're going to do the same thing we did on the first side. So we're going to begin by hugging the back leg. So now I will grab a strap and show it in case someone needs that support. You can use a strap here, or you can use a strap on your shin as well. But if you find that you can grip it, then grip it. And then once again, that elbow that's close to that inner thigh, you're welcome to push against that thigh so you can really open up more space in the hips. And then just sway side to side with your back, make it feel good. Which is lovely. Now my feet are flexed. It doesn't, you don't have to keep your feet flexed. This is something that I've developed simply to protect my knees because I've had very sensitive knees for a long time. And they finally healed through this practice, just as my wrists did. I used to do a lot of fine trapeze and gym stuff and I just wasn't very careful. And yoga, yoga taught me. Taught me to value these joints. Now from here, release your arms, place them on. Uh, the extension of your shoulders in whichever capacity suits you. And from there, just let your knees fall to one side. It does not matter which side you go first, because as you saw, we can be going both ways with the same position. When you get there, if you want to move your leg in any way that feels better for your twist, do it. Yeah, whatever you need to And breathe. Breathe deeply in your belly. Whenever you feel ready, make your way back through center. If your legs weren't crossed, make sure you cross them before you make your way. And then just cross the other way. Go all the way down. And then when you get there, you're welcome to keep your knees as they are or switch it up for a twist that feels best for your body today. And for this side, because it is a tighter side for my body, I like to place my hand on the outer thigh when I twist here. You'll feel the spaces that are tight. And wherever that is for you, I invite you to place your hands there and massage it. Send the energy from your fingertips onto your body. You are your own healer. 
You have the ability to do magical things for your trillions of wise cells. These are intelligent beings living inside of you. You are a universe in your own ways. And in that capacity, make sure that you create a space of safety, love, compassion. Always, always sharing good thoughts and good words to yourself. Even when you feel discouraged, even when you feel not loved by someone else, that's when you need to love yourself even more fiercely. That's where it starts. So let me make your way back to center. Hug both knees and forehead to the knees. And from here, we're going to grab the outer edges of our feet. We're going to open our legs out. And like a happy baby, we're just going to sway side to side. And from here, you're welcome to extend one leg out if you'd like, if that feels good. And then maybe extend the other leg out if it feels good. <laughs> you're welcome to laugh. You're welcome to cry. You're welcome to feel. And take a moment here to remember that you are a child. You'll always be one. And in fact, the child inside of you is probably the wisest, most intuitive being of the many beings that you are. So let that child speak to you. Speak back to that child. Ask your child questions. Feel the pain that you felt as a child. Feel the joys you felt as a child. It'll give you so much insight and ability to feel the now. We're blessed. We're very blessed. We all are. No matter the dragons, we must befriend in our worlds. And then hug your belly, hug your, hug your shin and your legs onto your belly. And this is called Yoga Brain, you guys. It's awesome. I highly recommend getting it every day. <laughs> Ah, and from here, if there's any other postures or movements that feel good for your body, take it. Otherwise, slowly allow your legs to fall onto the ground with your belly engaged. Make this your last abdominal opportunity here for engagement before coming completely onto your mat for Shavasana, corpse pose. And for those of you who don't practice yoga, corpse pose or Shavasana is... Without a doubt, the most important posture of them all. This is the space where you let be and let go of everything, including your breath. So just allow your breath to take whatever pattern it takes. And let Mama Earth ground your entire body. Tuck your chin slightly in so you can really feel your spine as much as possible on the ground. Uh, and simply let the body process the movements. Let your body process the breath that you've taken for these minutes we've shared together. And as thoughts drift through your head, let them be like clouds that pass by. There's no attachment to clouds. They simply begin a masterpiece, and then that masterpiece dissolves into another one. So let that be the case. So from here, we're going to slowly bring the breath back to full awareness. So we're going to bring the breath to the belly, letting it rise, opening the ribs, opening the heart. And then let gravity exhale with you. So feel gravity as your ribs come back together. 
as your belly sinks in. And begin a new cycle of breath. And as you're ready, begin wiggling your toes. Slowly, subtly. Begin moving your fingers. Allow your ankles and wrists to join this movement. And then bring the elbows and the knees, allowing the soles of the feet to make the mat. And just begin windshield wiping your legs side to side as you keep moving your arms if you feel called to, or you can be in stillness with hands and your belly or your heart. Eventually, the knees will want to fall to one side completely. Let them do that. Fall to whatever side feels best for you. And use the arm closest to the ground as a pillow for your head. Taking a fetal position here. And in this fetal posture, once again, take a full breath in. Full exhale, honoring your first yoga pose ever in this current vessel you are in. Honoring the child that you are. And remembering to hold conversations and love towards yourself. And with integrity and support of the ground, place your hand that's closest to the sky, now fully on the ground, and make your way onto a seat. Maybe grab that pillow if you have it nearby. We begin, we finish our practice just as we begin. A long spine, close your eyes or keep a soft gaze to the ground, whatever's most comfortable for you. Take a full breath in, belly expands, low ribs grow, middle ribs, heart. And at the top of your breath, take a pause. Exhale slowly and fully. On your next inhale, expand your arms out and up. Breathe in. At the top, the hands meet. Take an extra sip of air. Exhale, bring the hands down to the heart. Take a moment to remember your intentions for your practice. A moment to find your gratitude for whatever comes here and now to your mind. I am grateful for you, for those of you who are here. Thank you. Thank you. On your next inhale, expand your arms out and up. All the way to the top. Inhale, the hands meet. An extra sip of breath. Exhale, hands to the heart once again. This time, breathe normally. It is my joy and my honor to offer this practice to you. Thank you for sharing your light. Thank you for being a light to you and to whoever you touch in this world. Have a magical day. I can't see you guys, but I see you guys. Have a magical, magical day. Namaste.